So thank you everybody for coming. Um, a brief introduction. Uh, I'm outside of working uh, on the conference. I work for Continuum Analytics. Um, I'm a bouquet card developer and also um, uh, just solutions architect and tech lead at Continuum. Um, um, this is my Twitter handle, uh, my email, or you can also use uh, fabio.player.continuum.io.continuum.io. Uh, 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 um, a brief summary for this talk. So usually I try to fight the boring of me speaking uh, with some nice images. This time I will try to do it with some nice plots. <laughs> Um, before we start, some roadmap. Uh, I'll start with introductions and then I will basically go through what's, what's in the, this, the recent re release of Bokeh. And then I will have a couple of extras of the Bokeh ecosystem and briefly talk about what's next now. Um, so first, uh, show me some hands. Uh, like to know more about yourself. Um, uh, who here um, uses Bokeh? Oh, that's quite a good number. Um, uh, who here um, never heard about Bokeh? That's a good number as well. And that's good. <laughs> Hopefully I'll show something good for you. Um, who here um, uses uh, JavaScript uh, for plotting or charting stuff. Okay, and who here uses D3? Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so here are some quick numbers before telling more about Bokeh. Um, basically, um, when I started and when I joined the project, I think those numbers were were really smaller, really smaller. Bokeh had have grown a lot recently, um, and this is really cool. Um, and we had a lot more community engagement. Bokeh is an open source project, and it will say that uh, it's part of the PyData ecosystem, and it's under the GNOME focus. Um, and so, what is really amazing is to see those numbers really growing every, every month. Uh, we have a nice, a good amount of stars, ports. Uh, of course, this is not, we don't have 25, 27 downloads a month on Puppy. We have uh, 5,000. And now we also have a chat on Gitter. So I invite you to use it um, if you have questions or doubts or anything. Aside of that, we have the, the mailing list and other stuff. So what is Bokeh? Um, Bokeh is a visualization library made for uh, a Python and with data science in mind. So get, trying to get rid of all the problems that a data scientist have when they try to plot their, their results, which is beneficial anyway for any Python user or any user because actually Bokeh is not a, only a Python library. It, we have also bindings for Scala, um, uh, Lua, uh, Julia, and, and R, and JavaScript. Um, so to get more about the, the project, you can go to. Uh, you can go. Mm -hmm, okay. So let's show this. If you go to the website and to have more information about it, uh, it's going to be complicated. Okay, we have, you, you arrive at, um, at like the gallery, and most of these are made by the core, uh, core developers. Uh, those, are, uh, those are all uh, basically uh, bokeh plots uh, made uh, with bokeh. Um, and many of these are, some of these are actually user contributions. This one actually, Specifically, I, I'm very happy. This is full implementation of, by, made by a contributor, external contributor. 
and it's, it's really cool. Look at this. Uh, it's all Python, no JavaScript written. Um, so back to the presentation. Um, we recently just released a, a Bokeo 12 version. Oh, man. Let me change this resolution. It's terrible. Better. Um, okay. So, and you can get more information here, uh, the main side. We have a uh, documentation is really hard, probably as hard as writing a visualization library like this. It's really complex as a library, and trying to document everything in a proper way is hard. So, but we do our best, and I really invite everyone that goes to the documentation, maybe for the first time or whatever, to post issues regarding what they found hard and how they, we can improve. So, and, and basically, get, we walk through all the, the main topics of Bokeh and how to get through those things. So I encourage you to, to do this. Here's um, the Bokeh 012 release um, post. And basically, all objects you see here are bokeh plots, and they are interactive as well. So you can actually change things here. And there are different ways of, of doing this and how it works, and we'll be showing this during the demo. Um, hopefully, the Wi Fi is not so bad. And those things are connected, um, a few of these are connected to a server. Uh, uh, the, the sliders are just JavaScript callbacks, but let's see in a, in a moment. Um, cool. So what's that? Uh, let me try. Cool. So what are, what are the new things? I said this talk as intermediate because you to have a good understanding, you, you, you probably, it's better to have an idea of what's okay and have used it. But I think it's beneficial for everyone. Just, they should understand and should see the benefits even if they never see it. Uh, Bokeh comes with a Bokeh server, which is an object, uh, it's a, a tornado server that lets you write Python and say, okay, every time my plot um, is up updated or the user clicks on something or there's an event on the client side or in the, the or in the server side, uh, both sides can be synchronized. So we have, um, we used to have another server um, and it has changed since uh, around October or November. Um, right, this new, new, new server is extremely more performant. It's all web socket based. There are no more rest, uh, rest calls. Um, it's uh, based on Tornado and web sockets, as I said. Um, and it keeps basically all the, the, the obje objects and models synchronized between the server and the, the other side. So just to understand what, how a, a Bokeh server app looks like, um, let's take a look at this. Um, in our, oh wow, those are actually Bokeh server apps running on that page and being embedded. But here you can see a few examples. Uh, so for instance, this movies app is a bokeh server and it's connecting to a, a data, data store and I can actually change stuff. Every time I change this slider, a, a, a callback is triggered on the Python side, a pandas data frame is being filtered and the returns are sending back to, to the server. As you can see, it's quite fast and it's, it's quite reactive. And it's actually it's based on a, an R example, uh, which is actually slower than this. A shiny example, sorry. Um, let me see another, show off another example. Um, for instance, this, this, this other one shows a histogram with showing off some of the, 
local server features, so you know, we select uh, those areas, there's a Python callback that we compute the histograms and they are sending back to the, to the server. I can actually select multiple areas and I can actually also define the way those, those selections are triggering, triggering the, the Python callbacks. So uh, it can be either uh, every time a movement happens or in the end of the, the movement event. Um, so let's see. Um, let me. Um, Boker server now runs with the bokeh command. Um, basically, to run on your on your computer, you need to just you just need to type bokeh serve and the app or the app script or the app there. Uh, you you define your your bokeh. Uh, app, um, and it's quite simple to, to just run that. It accepts a lot of commands to deal with security and filtering. So you need, if you need to serve behind an nginx server, or you need just need to serve under some ports, or like uh, use HTTPS connections and those kind of stuff. Um, so this is what more or less a bokeh server app uh, is the code for. It's more or less the same thing as a, a, a trivial bokeh, bokeh standalone dynamic plot. It, there's a lot of code here, but basically what, what is needed is you need to basically import per doc, which is the only piece for the server. Um, you need to import to create your figure, which is the plot. Say all the, the, the things that, how do you want to make it look, um, add some glyphs or some elements to the plot. Here we define a Python callback and basically we, we, we put a button and say every time someone clicks the button, call this callback. And then we add everything to the, to the root of this card doc and that's it. Um, um, basically bokeh apps could be as simple as a Python script just a main pi, a main.py file and we write everything there. Or if we have some more complicated or complex um, um, requirements, we can, we can have a, a, a package or a directory with um, one file for, well, the main file, then a YAML file for Deem, how we want to make everything look and feel. Static for serving static files directly from Bokeh server. A server life cycle, so you can actually define callbacks to be triggered uh, in specific moments when the, the service is, is being spawned or like things are shutting down. Um, and then we have also have a template a directory directory with an index file that it can be re it can replace the Bokeh server main index uh, HTML template. That, that used to be quite painful in the past. That's a huge improvement, actually. Um, well, before jumping to the bokeh command, um, I'd like to show you a couple of um, examples. So let's... So let me put it here so that everybody can see. Great. So to serve a bokeh app, I just go and say bokeh serve. Um, let's do this. This one is a bokeh server app that basically has, oh, I forgot to say. I tell to show. Um, basically, it has a, uh, periodic callback being called every, I, I can't remember. Um, but it is redoing for Fourier harmonics uh, for the whole circle. Um, and there's a lot going on in the back end. It's quite fluid as well. Um, another example that is quite nice specific is, let's see. Uh, Oh, wait. 
In this case, I'm serving a Bokeh app that is the directory, and all I need to sh it is to give the directory any name. This is an OHLC plot that is basically um, recomputing all the, the statistics and, and all the, the, the simulation every, I think it's three or one millisecond. And as I change the sliders, uh, the, the model is changing its, its behavior. Um, and as you can see, it's quite fluid. And, and, and the rate is fast enough to keep the rate and sync everything between the Python side and the JavaScript side. So, it, and it can be really anything you, you, you need. Like, we are doing simulations with NumPy uh, and, and optimizing with Numba, but you could connect to your data source or do whatever kind of stuff, crazy stuff you need. Uh, cool. Uh, let me check, okay. Um, let's move ahead here. Um, so, okay, command. We also have two other, we, we just saw before, the Bokeh command, be serving the, the server. It also has different options. The main, most important ones are HTML. Basically, you can just, if your, your app doesn't have callbacks, but it's just like client-side callbacks or just some interactions with the widgets, you can use Bokeh HTML. It will create an HTML file that you can actually send by email or serve anywhere, any contains on the interactions that you need. Uh, and Bokeh JSON basically uh, saves a serialized uh, a JSON file that you can then take and, and use elsewhere to create Bokeh plots. Um, all the information, I, I, I try to put the related uh, links under every slide. Okay, client-side callbacks. Basically, Bokeh lets you also write JavaScript if you want. So. Let's say you don't need, don't ha want to have a server. You want to have some interactions, and like in this case, um, in this case, I have a notebook. I want to have, and I, I don't need a local server. I want to just have some sort of this this dynamic plot, and every time I move the slider, I want this to move. Basically. I would like to write JavaScript to do this, that. Uh, and yeah, Bokeh lets you, it provides a custom JS widget that lets you write either CoffeeScript or JavaScript and define the code. And it gives you access to the lower level data source. So in this case, this plot have one, one type of glyph, which is scatter, uh, and then it's connected to one data source. You can say, okay, on this data source, slide the objects or Made or do any computation or anything. In this case, it's just replacing the, the source with every year as it changed. Um, so, um, they, those JavaScript callbacks, they extend the capability. Uh, we are working, uh, this is kind of yellowish, because we are working on basically doing canned uh, JavaScript callbacks for the things that most people want, want to do. Um, but uh, we had a dream also to say, okay, what if we could write Python and make it work on the browser? Uh, and it's not a dream anymore. So with this new release, you can actually write Python functions that are we kindly translate to JavaScript for you, and they work on the browser. So. Um, like this case, I have a bokeh plot, a simple um, curve that um, I have sliders and I want to tweak with the curve uh, using the sliders. So to use Python, you just need to define your plot stuff um, and define a callback and define what kind of objects it need. In this case, the source, which is the data source of this plot, and a window object. Uh, the window object is actually the J JavaScript. But um, so basically, you get the data from the source. You tweak with with your um, your your 
parameters. You, you basically you read the slider values. In this case, we use this, the JavaScript sin uh, function to recompute the, the numbers. Uh, and then basically we get this object, call it as a callback, and we pass to the slider for every slider. So every slider here will be calling a JavaScript function that was written in Python. Um, and if you don't believe me, uh, well, I already show you actually. This is what's happening on on the, the first page, but like, let's show it locally. Um, Should work. Uh, no, this is a similar thing. Slider. Hmm. Maybe it's elsewhere. Maybe it's just slider. Okay. And that's that. Um, it, you, um, and in the O11 release, it just supported Python 3. Yeah, uh, but now it also supports Python 2.7 because. So there are no network callbacks. Sorry. There are no callbacks to the server. No, the, this actually is a. It just creates an HTML file um, slider. And that's that's what it's serving. There's no active callbacks or anything. Like it's standalone. Actually, you can just get that and send to a client and a customer and show, and show like things happening. Um, we actually, you can actually write notebooks um, with those kind of things and use Bokeh serve uh, Bokeh HTML to convert this notebook to an HTML file and just send the HTML file to to someone. It will convert the notebook to a bokeh HTML standalone file um, because it only grabs the, the cells that were created with bokeh. Does it have any limitations? Uh, anything that is notebook centric or anything, yes, anything that is notebook centric or that relies on your local data will not work. But um, any Real anything, anything that is not related to your environment should work. Yes, then you're fine. Yeah. Uh, cool. We also now support have a better support for Jupyter notebook callbacks. So it it used to be quite hard. Um, because Jupyter have their own web sockets that connects to the Jupyter web sockets. We have our, our, our web socket stuff. Right now, you can actually, we, we, we release the push notebooks callback that you can actually use to do the same thing uh, and use note, IPython notebooks widgets um, to connect to, to a plot and, and re, recompute stuff. Um, Okay, another big problem in Bokeh was that, honestly, it didn't look so well, especially the widgets. Um, they, they used to suck a lot. Um, but they are super cool and better now. Uh, and also, it used to have really a lot of limitations with laying out stuff, so it was really hard to lay out plots in the, the way every user wanted. Um, so is, this one is a quick comparison about how things look now. Oh, where's my mouse? It's there. Okay. Um, you can see the <coughs> old one here and the new one here. Um, there are a few tweaks and changes in this this case, but uh, the main things are that H box and V box, which we used to be the old, old boxes, they are gone. Um, 
luckily. Um, now we have row columns approach. Uh, we, we also have a widget box which, which basically makes it easier to, to build rows and columns. Um, and it's, it's quite simple now to lay out stuff and, and lay out stuff in a way that um, axes are aligned and, and you know, you can, you can define where to put the title uh, and, and legend. Actually now title and legend are, uh, can be put out of the, the plot itself. So you, Bokeh used to always need the legend inside the canvas area. You, you can actually now put it outside. Um, this is an example of layout, column layout. It's fairly easy. You just need to say, okay, layout, column, and then tell what to put in the column. And same for the row. Um, and same for grid plot. We basically use array um, lists to define what goes, and we, we compute everything. We, we, we actually have a... Um, uh, uh, responsive uh, flag that you can use to, to make things responsive. Um, uh, and yeah, there are a few options like for the sizing mode, stretch or, or other, other options. Um, okay, some layout, layout examples I already showed you. Um, Custom extensions. So a lot of times Bokeh do not contain everything. Like if you want to have uh, a slider that looks differently, or if you want to have a different kind of plot or a different kind of tool, you can actually, Bokeh now provides a, a mechanism to extend our models, sort of a plugin system. Um, so you can actually create your own Bokeh model either on the Python side only, or Python and JavaScript side. You don't need to, we, we try to make it less complicated as possible. So if you don't, you need to make changes to the JavaScript side, you can actually define that on the Python, your, your new Python client class, and you define a specific new, new attribute. So how extending Python classes work? You basically, well, actually, let me show, let me use this to help me. So to extend uh, Bokeh on the Python side, it's quite, it's quite simple. You just uh, inherit from the, the model you want to extend and add everything you need for, for your custom model. Um, if you need to extend on the JavaScript side, it's a bit more complicated you need to basically, uh, you, can, you have two options, uh, write your CoffeeScript or, or JavaScript file and, and then use it, or just, you can actually just use your, define your implementation in the model itself. Um, and I can show you here. And that's all that, basically. You define your Python class and you define the special Dunder implementation attribute to define the CoffeeScript and the JavaScript. Um, so the result of this, in this case, is for instance, if I want a new hipster old school range, I can, I can just define all these things and it works. And it, it injects all the JavaScript and, and the HTML into the page and replace the, the, the custom slider one. So, um, but you can also extend uh, more more things. Like, if you what if Bokeh doesn't support 3D and we want to have a 3D model? Now you can do it, um, and you can. So, for instance, Bokeh. Show surface 3D. You can actually have a, use whatever JavaScript library you want to integrate with Bokeh and, and have the Bokeh managing the, the, the higher level 
things and the, having the, your lower level JavaScript API doing the, the other stuff. So in this case, this, it's using VSJS um, that consumes a bouquet data source and plots the 3D dynamically on the page. Cool. Um, annotations. Uh, Bokeh now have uh, real annotations, so you can actually use uh, stuff to annotate your code. Uh, we have arrows, like this case, and it's not that complicated. You just import what you need. Uh, add as a layout, so in this case, an, an arrow with open head, and I give the coordinates. You can actually tie that to data sources. Um, this is a box annotation here to highlight a specific area. And yeah, the, the way you use it is more or less the same. Um, you have labels, like in this case, with different aspects, and we can tie it to different uh, models. Spans. We have much better geo support. Now we actually support a geo data, JSON data source that you can use to, to drop points on the, on the screen. Um, we have, we still have Google, Google Maps support, um, but Google just changed their terms of using APIs and basically you need to have your own key to, to use it. Um, basically, they didn't say anything uh, and changed from one day to the other. It, all tests failed, so it was not nice. But And it's a, an extra step for the users, and we are trying to, to check what we can do to make it just work. Um, Geo support, we have, we have good um, support for tile renders. So if you have any service that is a tile renderer, uh, we provide some force support for that if, if it, um, to consume Mercator projections. Um, new TypeScript and JavaScript API. So TypeScript and JavaScript APIs have, uh, is, is, is pairs down the plotting API, the models API, and a brief charts API, which is not like the Bokeh core charts API. Um, it's just, uh, a handy thing to create uh, like bars and, and pies on the JavaScript side. Like in this case, um, JS transforms. We have new JS transforms, which means you ha if you have a data column, uh, a column da of data in the Python side, and you want to basically create new data from that, like plot objects from the same column with some transformation. We support this. We now support uh, jitter and interpolation. So if you have just a, a number of dots and you want to interpolate in different ways, you just specify the kind of interpolation you want. We have now better WebGL support, it, and it's actually quite fast. Um, just show quickly an example. I'll just show quickly an example here of um, and it now supports all the glyphs, basically. In this case, we have WebGL not support, not activated. And if I zoom in, you can see this time when things are gray, it's basically recomputing everything. Um, and this is how it's recomputing to render everything. This is how it's rendering with WebGL. This, this, those, both examples are, have 10,000 points. Um, uh, we have examples with one or two or 300 points and WebGL performs quite well. But but uh, now there's a whole exo ecosystem uh, growing around Bokeh as well. Uh, I want to mention two projects that are quite cool. The first one is Holoviews, uh, and basically Holoviews lets you have annotated data. Uh, it, it's basically notebook-centric and lets you have annotated data, and it pre-builds, uh, it, it 
creates a new um, grammar to let you do specific complicated stuff to your annotated data. So let's say I want to slice my big um, chunk of data in different layers, in different dimensions, and I, have a, I want to have a slider to basically go through different steps and different layers of that cube of data. It lets you do that quite, quite fast. This, those lines create those, this, this plot here, and as you can see, it's quite nice to read and quite dense in terms of uh, quite uh, lean in terms of code. This, this other one project, it's, I would say it's fairly cool. Uh, basically, Data Shader is, is part of the Bokeh family, and it lets you plot massive number of data on the browser. This example here is uh, taking the New York day pick up and drop off data set. It's a 12 million data points data set. Uh, a few gigabytes, I think it's 10 gigabytes of data. Um, and it, it basically just works. So, and it's, well, let me show you. Um, hopefully we still have time. Okay, I should have that somewhere. Okay, I still have questions though, right? No, no. okay. <laughs> so you wanna have questions? You wanna have questions or you wanna see this? This, cool. So very briefly, one problem with uh, big data is that you, if you have points, points tend to overlap. So in this case, if I have 12 million points, I'm just plotting 1,000 1, here, you can barely see what's happening. In this case, 10,000, 10, it's, it's over plotting because you don't, you don't really understand anything anymore. You can tweak with the data and say, okay, let's do, a, let's just have 10% alpha and 10% reduce the, the size of the, the dots, but you don't understand stuff yet. Same here, you try to improve, and you can actually see that uh, the problem is that data is not linearly distributed, so you have to, you know, have transforms and try to build more that better data. Uh, uh, but the best thing you can, uh, this is actually changing uh, and using a logarithm uh, transform. This one is actually changing and using an equalized histogram. So basically, uh, data shader lets you specify all those transforms and have a, a, a nice, uh, set of transform operations before it gets stuff to do okay. So basically every time you have data in the screen, you only see the points you would see. So in this case, I can zoom in, it will basically go in and out and recompute stuff if I didn't break anything. Um, well, let's reload that. Um, oh, this is the one on the browser. Anyway, um, this is being served on the network, not locally. Uh, yeah. If I still have time, I will show you. Otherwise, just grab me later. Um, Alex, do you have time or no? No. Three minutes to the next call. Okay, like, like, I think three minutes is maybe fine. Let's see. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, you're happy to answer questions on the conference, aren't you? Yeah. Thank you. You know, whether we 